What's up? Gonna give you a quick little rundown of these new samples. People have been asking for a video, so here's a quick one. I got in front of me a kit that I was that's been recorded, and it's kind of like your basic kit. Here's what it sounds like. Pretty cool. Nothing, nothing amazing. Just a nice punchy kit. Here's what it sounds like in the, in the context of the mix. This isn't really mixed yet, but it's just kind of a, a balance. So it sounds cool, but you know it's nice and it's nice and punchy, but nothing really. Like it, it, you know, if I think for the song it needs something more huge, and I always preferred things a little more huge sounding on the drums. So, what I've done here is I've converted the kicks and snares to MIDI uh, using an application called DR, Massey DRT. Most of you guys probably already know about that. I can kind of go into that in a later video, but just to give you an overview of the actual contact player, here's kind of where it goes. So, what we've got here is I have the SF kit here. And let me just kind of put this off to the side so we can see what's going on. Okay, so something to really look at in this kit in particular is these different tunings here. So if you click on this button here, what I've done is I did three different head choices and three different tunings, all dampened and undampened on this SF kit. And the reason is, is because if you guys have ever tried to tune samples to match the frequency of your uh, snares that you're blending in to keep, because, you know, as, as us as mixers, we try to sneak in samples, but we don't want to change what the band recorded, especially if they've done a great job doing it. Or if it's a band that you've recorded and you've recorded it and somehow maybe you messed up and you have to add some more rooms or you have to add some more bite to stuff or more girth and you don't want to change what was there. So you're trying to to really make these samples fit in the mix in a way that no one knows they're there. They just think that it sounds better. So this is great for that. And I'm going to show you why right here. So I'm going to pick this low C Emperor, low C Emperor, and we'll just kind of go over like how these sound. And again, all these samples are very they're pretty much just just raw samples the way they were tracked nothing too crazy on it i do give you these um and i do have to thank robin leone for programming this for me he did an awesome job um and so each each instrument here or each mic has its own fader you can bring them up or down and the way you work the eq is right below the kick is kick A. Once you hit that, that green light enables, and now you have your own EQ for each instrument if you want it. So snare top would be over here, you know, toms, overheads, rooms, etc. This is just kind of a quick rundown. Also in the advanced over here, you have the amount of rooms that go to the overheads, room close, room far, and room high, which is pretty crucial because as you're as you're wanting to make these fit in, well, I guess it's not that crucial if you're if you're doing multi output, but for the purpose of this, I'm just going straight stereo out of contact. But I like to go multi out when it comes to actually mix, so I can kind of treat it as if they were part of the actual kit. So here's what I will do here: I'll play you the snare just soloed here, coming out of this, and this is just raw. So that's the C tuning. Now, now if we go to C dampened, you can hear how, it, and again, too, this is just the rooms here. None of the close mics are on. So then you see how the dampened, how, how much it changes the room sound. And then let's go to the same thing with a controlled sound, CS head. Listen to that.
and then same thing dampen. Now what's interesting is I have the same little quarter inch piece of moon gel on all of these snares and you can hear how the, the thickness of head really changes the way that the the snare responds in the room. And now here it is with an Emperor X, it's a very thin head, no dampening. And then same thing with dampening. Now you might not think that's too crucial yet, but once you're trying to sneak these into your song, I will show you how this begins to make sense. So as we just kind of loop this, let's just listen to our original snare here. So that's pretty high. I'd say that's somewhere around the D. So let's just go up here to a D dampened. That seems to fit pretty well with me compared to, let's say, the, uh, the C sharp. I do like the extra girth, but the, the extra ring in the room I'm not digging. So here we go, dampen. Still, the, the tuning issue is kind of a, a deal breaker for me. So let's just use this. I'm going to engage the uh, overheads and the original rooms here, and we'll hear just the drums soloed without the drums. And then we'll add these in. You can hear how even that totally unprocessed just adds such a huge thickness to the drums. Now I want to add some more length. So this is just throwing your stock bomb factory compressor right after these and watch how they just really come to life and get huge. Sorry, my mouse is getting a little screwy right now. I have to hit things like four times for it to go through. Um, now that's just the snare. So now also look how, look how much this kick sample in the rooms really helps tie this kit together. And then without it. Sounds unnatural. And then with it. Cool. Okay, so now next, let me show you how these little adjustments here work. So let's say we've got just this far room soloed here. Now say in our drum mix we think there's too much kick in there, we can just bring this down here. And likewise, you can do the same thing with the snare and the toms. Now let's hear that in the mix and see what it does.
I'll be doing some more videos soon on how to do uh, some cooler stuff and on the other kits also, but hopefully this gets you started in the meantime.